Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Today's webinar will be about, are those really vectors giving your animation a natural look by our product manager, Victor Paredes? As a reminder, you can send your questions in the GoToWebinar question box and we'll try to reply all your questions. This webinar will be recorded, so remember to follow us, subscribe to our YouTube channel and you'll receive a notification once the video is available. Also, we encourage you to share your Instagram stories uh, with the hashtag, hashtag webinar, uh, hashtag Moho Animation, and tag us as Moho Animation. We'll try to share your stories. So I will leave you with Victor and his presentation. Are those really vectors giving your animation a natural look? Thank you so much. Hello. Uh, okay, you can see my screen now. Hello, I'm Victor Paredes. I'm the product manager of Moho. And I want to show you how to create uh, animation made with vectors in Moho, but trying to give the vectors um, a look of traditional illustration. So, for instance, probably you have seen this one. Uh, this is an animation um, I created with the base on the illustration made by Chris Chatterton. Uh, and the idea here was to to create this animation, but keeping the same style, keeping the brush and keep, keeping the natural look of that. So this is all done with vectors, but actually we can uh, hide the brushes here. And you can see how this is all done with vectors. You can see this purple uh, shape here is actually just aligned with some brushes. So this is all absolutely everything done with vectors. Um, cannot really show you the, the animation here. I, th I don't think it's running too well uh, because of all the recording here and my computer is not too strong, to be honest. Um, <laughs> but um, this is how, how it looks. So I have another example here I wanted to show you and we are going to, I will show you some examples, but then I want to show you like an actual, how to create an actual character and how to use these tools. But I really like these examples. These are some dinosaurs uh, made. The illustration was made by Jerome Vogel. And here I am importing the illustration here. So at the left here, you can see the original illustration. Okay. And it has like a lot of texture and, and different like stains and stuff like that. And I tried to reproduce that with the vector characters. So this is all vector. Again, we can hide the brushes and you can see how the vectors look without the brushes activated. And we can even hide the masking and you can see how all these uh, characters are actually using a lot of masks of mask of masks. Um, and now you can see the animation here. So why using vectors? Why not using uh, bitmaps? And the reason for that is that uh, Moho works well, great with bitmaps. I really like it. Uh, you can add meshes, you can add bones, you can bend things. Uh, you can be very detailed there. But using vectors give you an amount of control that uh, you, you won't find really in images. So to give you an example, let me just isolate this guy here. Here. So we have this guy. And the animation of this guy is, is the, the tail is, is becoming some kind of spiral. And, and I was, while animating this, I was very worried about animating this as a spiral, but it never touch, touches uh, itself, the tail. Um, and I doing that with images, it's very hard to like to have that control with the image, like having this tail like this and end with this like that. So when you have a vector, actually, let me select that layer. Um, actually, let me just fade the unselected layers so we can all I didn't put names to the layers. That was a mistake for the webinar. Okay, but now I, I have this layer selected. You can see with this option, the only layer in color will be the layer I have selected. So that's why I can know. But you can see that this layer has animation on the vectors. So that is the animation that is keeping all this shape working here. So I can modify the, the curvature, the position of the points. I can change the line width. And you can see the brush there changing. So I can animate all this. Um, so I can keep the shape consistent across the animation. And I don't even need to rig this because I can simply animate the points. You could do something like this also using smart bones. But since I was doing, I was just having fun with this scene, I, I just decided to animate 
the points here. Now, if you see, if I remove the point animation, I will just mute these channels. You can see how this will look without that point animation. And you can see the result is not as pretty as before. Uh, so that is the, the main idea. I want to show you another example. Uh, and this one is a droid from Star Wars Visions. Um, I could work on that short uh, made by Cartoon Salon. And this is a little droid. Uh, I made some modifications here for, for the webinar, but this is the droid and it has some animation. The idea of these characters it was that you should, uh, the, we wanted to have characters, read characters that could live together with traditional animated characters. So that is what this droid is doing. Um, let me just hit play here. And you can see how this line um, is actually moving. If I select this bone layer, you can see all the, the keyframes and all the animation moving here. Uh, we have some smart bones to move this character. Um, and you can see that when the character moves, hopefully you will see this in the in the streaming, but the the line uh, boils a little bit. So the idea was to give the sensation that this was uh, constantly re, uh, redrawn when moving. So if I rotate this, let me just zoom in so maybe you will see it better. So you can see how the line, the line changes. And that is done with a style. We, in this webinar, we are going to work with the styles. I want to explain some of that. So, But basically, when you have a style, uh, you can open the advanced style window here just by clicking here. And now we have a bigger window and you can go here to styles and select the style. So I have line draw it here. And with this style is applied over every single line of this file. So if I select, for instance, I can change the color of the line. So I can change the color of the line and that will affect the entire animation. Uh, I can change the line width. So it can be thicker or thinner. Or I can change the brush. So I can just click here and select any brush. So for instance, I want yeah, I want it to have um, rainbows instead. So I just do that. And now the entire animation will work with these rainbows. So yeah, this is more accurate, I guess. So the last example I want to show you before uh, starting with the like the actual webinar is um, this this is another character from the Star Wars short. This this is only this is a test I created. This is not something that is in the short. Actually, this character was mostly animated traditionally, but I wanted to test like here is the the original character uh, made um, traditionally with bitmaps, and I wanted to have something similar but done with vectors. And the idea also here is that if you see this character moving, you can see how the line. Um, also boils when it moves and I can just select this. These are just vector layers. I can alt and right click to select a layer. So you, here you can see how these lines are moving and maybe I don't want the eyebrows to be, um, to be like that. So I can just modify them like this. And you can see when I move the eyebrows, you can see how the line changes. So maybe I want the eye to be. I don't know, I'm just doing something silly here, but maybe looking up like that, maybe the same for this one. So I have total control over the vectors. And I think that is, that is very cool about Moho that you can actually modify the vectors and create keyframes for the vectors. So they can, they can have any shape you want. So now we have this animation and you can see how everything is vibrating when this character moves. Um, and I have also a style here and we can modify that. So in this case, this is using a brush and, and we can modify. Maybe we want more spacing on the brush. So you can see it looks more like uneven now. And we can add some uh, size variation here. Maybe we want it to happen more often. So now it's it looks a bit more dirty there uh, and it will vibrate more because it's, it's dirtier also. Okay, so we are we are going to use these concepts for this webinar. So I'm going to create, I'm going to reset all this. I'm going to create a new file. And, and when you create a new file in Moho, um, and you use the freehand tool, I will just use the freehand tool and I will draw over frame zero, which is the frame where we set up. 
our project. If I draw here, let me just make this bigger, I will just draw a flat uh, vector line. So you can see it's, it's a vector line that I can modify. Again, I can modify the language, uh, I mean the curvature, the language, and the position of the points. Uh, but we also have styles here. So in any file you open with Moho, you, you have these styles here. So for instance, if I select wet ink, now everything I draw will have this wet ink um, texture and I can change the color. Let me just select another color here and maybe add some transparency to the color. So I'm just drawing with wet ink. Uh, I will select this one, rough ink. And you can see how now I am drawing with rough ink. And I am using these styles. And now, again, one nice thing about the styles is that even when I have my, my drawing already done, I can still go to the style here at the, at the right top. Um, and I can select, for instance, rough ink, and I can tell the software, okay, I want the color of the of every line done with this uh, with this style to be red or to be blue or any color, or or maybe I want it to be thicker. So all those lines can be thicker or thinner, uh, or I want to change the the brush it is using. So I can simply modify the brush and modify the values of the brush there. So everything is connected, and I can edit everything at the same time. Now, um, let me just select all these points and I will press delete on the keyboard just to remove all this. And I will go to the styles here and I will select no style here, none. So I don't have any style, I will reset this. But now what I want to do to start with this project is I want to remove all those styles because I want to create my own styles, okay? So in order to do that, you can just go to styles and delete unused. And since none of these styles are being used, they will be deleted. So you can see I have no styles now. All right. So we, we will start from zero. Now, um, we are going to work with this dinosaur that maybe you have seen on social media. I, I made a, a little animation test for this webinar. So we are going to, to try to reproduce this test here. Um, so what I want to do is I will just, first I will just crop this image a little bit with this tool. I will put one image here and now I will duplicate the image and I will put another one here. I like to you to do this. Um, I have two images and then the second one, I open the layer properties by double clicking and I will set the opacity down. Okay. So I click okay here. And the idea here is that I'm going to use the, the image at the left as a reference for the colors and the image at the right as a reference to trace it. Okay. And now I'm going to select this layer here and I'm going to create a, a rectangle, a big rectangle here. And this rectangle, I will select the shape of this and I will take the color from here. So I have this, uh, this green color here. All right. So now, uh, before starting here, I want to create two styles, one for the line and another one for the texture of the character. Okay. So I will go to style here. Uh, I will click on new and now I am, I am creating this new style. So this is called style one, but I want to call it line T Rex. Okay. And this style, I don't want to control the fill color with this style. So I will uncheck this. So that means that the style won't control the fill color. Uh, I will, I want to control the line color. So I will keep this on and I want to control the line width also. So I will keep this on. All right. And I also want to add a, a brush to this. So I will click here on no brush and I will look for a brush that could look similar to the actual line of this. So maybe it can be this one. I can modify this value. So for instance, the spacing, I want to adjust it. Uh, I want to add some variation amplitude here. All right. So let's say something like that. And now I will click. Okay. So now I have my line uh, created and I, I will actually take the color from the line here. So you see, I, I am just picking like this green color from here. So that way that line will be green also. All right. And now I'm going to create a second style for the texture. So I will go to styles, new, 
and I have a new style again, I don't want to paint the fill color. I don't want, in this case, I don't want to paint the stroke color because you can see I have several colors on the dinosaur. So I want to be able to apply all these colors all together without uh, the style like changing those colors or, or creating only one color for all of them. So I will just uncheck this. And I don't want the style to control the line width. So I will uncheck also this, all right? But I want the style to control the brush. So I will click on the brush and I will select a, a brush that could work for this style. So let's say maybe this one, and I will change the jitter angle. So it will be a bit dirtier there. And maybe the spacing will be bigger and the amplitude will be bigger here also. So you can see it's more uneven now. Uh, let's say something like that. So let's say I'm happy with the, the styles now. All right, so I'm going to start using these styles. So in order to do that, I will create a new vector layer and I will call this vector layer body um, line because I want to draw the, the lines of the body here. So I will select the freehand tool. I will go to style here and set it to none because I don't want to edit the style anymore. So now I am, I am editing the color which I, I am going to use to paint. And here I, in style one, I will set line T-Rex. Okay. I forgot to give a name to the other style actually. Let me just give a name to the style two. So this one is going to be texture T-Rex. Okay. So now the styles they have and they have their own names. Anyway, so I set this to none and now I will say, okay, I want to use the style one, which will be line T-Rex. So now if I use the freehand tool, I can draw over this, so I will trace this with the freehand. And I will just draw here, these lines, uh, maybe these lines here. Okay, so it's not going to be exactly the same, especially for this webinar, because I want to do it very quickly, but I'm trying to get something closer to the original drawing. Now, you see, I draw something here which is going to be the mouth and I included the like the lips of the mouth and now I, I'm going to to draw the lower part of the mouth but I'm also going to include the lips of that so I have like basically two lines for the lips and I am doing that because I want to animate the mouth I want the mouth to open and close so I need to have those two lines here you see when I open the mouth I want that to happen now another I will just undo that Another nice thing about vectors is that if I didn't draw it correctly, I can always modify it with the vector tools like or change the line width or anything. So I have control over all that. So if you want to be more detailed or you want to be closer to the actual reference, you can still do that. Okay, but I'm doing this very quickly. So I won't edit too much. So I'm just adding these lines and now I will add one tooth, another one, another one, another one and the nose and the eye, okay? So let's suppose I'm happy with the, with the body now, all right? Now, what I'm going to do is to create another vector layer. And this second vector layer will be called uh, body texture, okay? So I will paint the texture here and this texture is going to be below the line. So I will just put it here. And now I can hide the reference because I'm not going to use the, the, the ref, this reference for this. I'm going to use the reference for the color. And now I'm going to select texture of the T-Rex here. Okay, so now I, I, will, I will be painting with that texture. And I will use the freehand tool. And now if I hold Alt and drag to the right or to the left, I can change the size of the, of the brush for the freehand. So in this case, I will use a much bigger brush. And now I will just pick the color from here. So I will just pick the color from the body and I will start painting the body with this brush. So you can see I, I am just painting here. Again, uh, I'm trying to get close to the dinosaur, but it doesn't need to be. I mean, for this webinar, it won't be like exactly that. Uh, and now I will pick another color here just to paint this. Uh, maybe I can set some transparency for the color. So it will paint more transparent there. I will just paint this here. Again, it's not going to be exactly the same, but we are trying to get close to it. Um, maybe like that. I will pick this yellow color 
for the for the head and I will paint the top part of the head first okay because the, if I paint it first uh, it will be easier to animate later and actually let me just uh, increase the opacity here to paint it here and now I will paint the lower part okay and I will use only one stroke which is going to be easier to animate later so I have this and now I can pick other colors around here so this this character has several colors I'm just trying to get something close to it so I will continue painting here uh, now I will pick the color so I'm just picking picking different colors uh, and now um, let's say I'm happy with this um, now I will paint you see these little yellow lines here so I will pick that uh, that yellow color here but now I will make my my brush much smaller uh, with alt and I will set the, the opacity to be a bit higher um, so I will draw those lines to get something similar there so I'm just doing that and I will use the same for the teeth so I will just pick the colors of the teeth here here and here and now these little stains here so I will pick the color here and just paint it like that like that and then we have a few things here so we are trying to reproduce all this um, again you you can do it and you can be more accurate that than what I am doing but this is the the main idea so now let's say uh, I'm, I'm happy with this it's not exactly the same ah I think I'm missing some orange lines here I will just I want to paint that orange also so I will make it bigger and paint a little bit of orange there all right let's say I'm happy with this uh, but now I see the line and the line is not too similar you can see it's a bit thicker here so I'm going to go to the styles go to the line and maybe it will reduce the thickness I think I like this more and I will also change the brush of that so I want it to to have more like variation amplitude so the size is going to change more there so you can see I don't know I don't know how it works in the streaming but I'm changing some details here the the, the line is changing it's more uneven now and I think I'm happier with this now all right and another thing I want to do is I will open this brush again this brush settings and I want the line to boil so I will activate this and by default the interval of boil uh, is one frame so if I click OK and now I hit play um, let me just hide these points here you can see hopefully you will see the line boiling there and it's boiling every single frame so if I go frame by frame here with the keyboard the line is changing in every single frame okay I can change that too I can just go to the brush again here and I can say maybe I want this to boil every four frames so now if I go with the keyboard here this line is going to change only every four frames okay but what I like to do is to actually set the randomness interval to zero so when it is zero uh, I press ok and now the line doesn't move but it will only move if if I animate those points so if I move for instance this line you will see how this line is boiling because it is moving okay so this is very cool because that means that the, the line is going to boil only when you are animating the character so uh, the idea here is to simulate someone is drawing the character and someone is drawing the character in every frame but if the character is is not moving no one will draw that again because it's not moving so the idea is to to create that kind of effect so i will just set the the boil to that and i will do something similar for the texture i will select the texture here uh, select the brush of the texture and I, again I will set line boil here and I will change this um, these values so the line boil will follow these values and I will also set the randomness interval to zero so this is going to change only when the character is moving okay uh, now we are going to continue drawing now um, I will create a new vector layer and I will call this vector layer uh, leg one line okay 
So I want to draw the leg, so I will show the reference here. And But actually, I want to use the same values for the line I have on the body. So what I'm going to do is to select the body line. And with the Select Shape tool, I will select any of the shapes of the body. So I would just click this. And that will copy the properties of that. So now if I go back to the leg one, now I am using the same pro properties of that. So I, by just selecting that, I can like recycle those properties. So now I'm going to draw this leg here and this, the feet and this. And let's say I'm happy with the leg now. I will hide the reference and now I will create a new vector layer. I will call it leg, leg one texture. I will put the texture under the line here. And now I will select the body texture and I will select one shape from the body just to copy the properties here. So maybe this one, all right? So I just select that. And now if I go to the leg texture, I can start painting and I have the same properties here. But now I will pick this color and maybe we'll set the alpha the opacity to be higher. And I will paint this and maybe this brush is too big. So I will set it to be smaller uh, and now I will be picking other colors too so maybe something like that again you can do it better uh, if you have if you don't have the pressure of doing the, all this during a webinar <laughs> you can get much better results but let's suppose again let's suppose I'm happy with this uh, now I'm going to draw the other leg so I will create a new vector layer I will call it leg to line I will go to leg one line, um, select one of the lines just to pick the properties of that line. And now I will go back to the leg two and draw the, the leg here with the vectors. Okay, so let's suppose I'm happy with the leg. So I will create a texture for it. So leg, uh, leg two texture, this is a new layer. And actually these layers should be under the body. So I will move the texture below here and also the line here. I'm just reordering this. So now I, I will select again the leg one texture just to copy the properties of that. So I just click on one of the shapes with the select shape tool. And now I will go to the leg two and paint. Sorry, I will pick the color from the leg and hide the reference. And now I will just paint this second leg, All right? Uh, in this case, I'm using the the brushes that comes uh, that come with the with the software, but you can also create your own brushes. If you don't know how to do that, uh, please check the tutorial we have on YouTube. Chad uh, Trofgruben he has a very good tutorial about creating uh, your own brushes, so you can check that. And uh, now the only thing missing here are the arms, so I will create a new vector layer and I will call it arm one. And uh, now I will se select the line of the leg here, go back to the, arm, to, the, to the arm one layer and just draw the first arm. And now I will create a second vector layer. I will call it arm two. And I will put that arm two behind the body, I think, here. Yes, and I will just draw that second arm here. Let's say something like that. So now let's say the dinosaur is ready to go now. So we are going to rig this dinosaur. I will, I'm going to create a very simple rig for it. Okay. So the first thing is I'm going to create a new bone layer. I can call the bone layer T-Rex. And now I will select all these layers and I will drag them inside of the T-Rex bone layer. Okay, and now we just need to add bones. If you don't know how to rig something, because I, I will try to explain all this, but if you don't know how to do it or you need more details, please check those tutorials too. They are on YouTube or you can download them from our web. Um, so you can check them there. But anyway, I will use the add bone tool. I am on frame zero because everything I rig needs to be on frame zero. So I will start adding a bone here. This is going to be like my main bone. Uh, and now I'm going to add bones for the tail. So I will add one, two, and three bones for the tail. Now I will hold Alt on the keyboard and click 
on this bone and now release alt because I want the next bones to create uh, the next bones that I create I want them to be child of this bone so now I will create a bone for for the neck here and another bone for the head and I'm going to create another bone for the mouth here because I want to open and close the mouth All right now I'm going to add the bones for the for the arms so I will alt and click here because I want the arms to be child of this bone so now I add one bone here, alt and click here, and now the second one here. And finally, I'm going to add bones for the legs. So alt and click over the main bone because I want the legs to be child of the main bone here. And now I will add one bone here, another one here. And now I want to create a target for these legs. So I'm going to hold alt and click on the canvas because that way no bone is selected and that means that the next bone I create won't, won't be child of any of the bones. So I will create like the, this foot bone that is not going to be child of anyone. Now again, alt and click on the main bone. One, two bones. Now alt and click on the canvas and this one. And now finally I need to set up the, the target bones because I want to control the legs with target bones. So to do that, I will just select with the select bone tool, I will select this bone and now with the reparent bone tool, which is this one here, I will hold control or command on my keyboard and click here and you will see a little circle appears there. That means that this bone will be the target of this bone. Okay. And I will repeat the process for the other leg. Click on this bone with the select bone tool and now with the reparent bone tool, I hold control and then click on this bone and now you can see the circle there. So now my bones are, are ready here and I can test them with the manipulate bone tool. Okay. And actually I'm going to test them on frame one this time. So you can see how this is working. Uh, things are bending, the, the brushes are, are boiling. So things are working fine. But if I move one leg, you can see the entire body is moving. And if I, if I, if I move one leg, the other leg is, is getting distorted too. This is not really working well so far. And this is happening because uh, in Moho, um, every layer that is inside of a bone layer by default is being affected by all the bones. Okay, so the strength, for instance, of the tail is also affecting the legs or the strength of the, of the head is also affecting the arms. Uh, so we need to isolate some of the stuff here. The good part is that I will just remove this keyframe. So I will select them here and press delete. I will go back to frame zero. And the good part is that isolating this is very simple. Um, and actually I'm going to start from the bottom. So I will select the leg to texture and I will use the select bone tool here. So I have the vector layer selected. I select the bone, uh, the bone, the select bone tool. And now I'm using the lasso mode here just in case. Uh, I will just select these three bones that are related to the leg. Okay, so once I select them, I can go to link bones. So now this layer is only going, going to follow the strength of these three bones. Okay, now I select the line of the leg and this line is going to follow this, the same three bones. So they are already selected. So I just press link bones here. And now I go to the arm. I want the arm to follow only this single bone. So I just select this single bone and link the bones. And now I have the body texture. And in this case, I'm going to use um, with the select bone tool. I will click on one bone here for the tail. And now I will hold shift to select the other bone of the tail. And also this one and this one and the mouth. OK, so I'm going to use only these bones. I'm not using the, the, the bone of the mouth for now because I will show you something later with that. So I will just link these bones for now. And now the same for the body line. The, the body line is going to follow these bones. I just click here. And now the second leg is going to follow these three bones. And the line of the leg is going to follow the same three bones. And the arm is going to follow this little bone here. So now if I test my character now, now I can move the legs and you can see how the legs are not distorting the rest of the body. And if I move the the head, you can see the head is not distorting the arms anymore. Okay. Now the bones, they have a strength here. You can see these ovals are the strengths of the bones. 
you can select all the bones and reduce the strength a little bit maybe that will work better uh, you can go bone bone by, by bone too by doing that but i'm happy with this as it is all right now uh the only thing that i am missing for this very simple rig is that i want to open the mouth okay but you see that this bone is actually not moving the mouth so to do that i will go to the body line first and do you remember that, that with the body we drew this part separated and we have the lips here so basically what i have to do let me just undo that is i will use the the bind points tool okay with the with this tool i will hold alt and click on this bone and you can see this bone is selected now and it's showing me this bone uh, in the color uh, green okay and now i need to tell um, the software which points i want I want them to follow this bone only all right so i will buy i will bind the points to this bone so to do that i will i can here's a little tip i can just select one or more points of one line or more lines okay so i will just select these two for instance and then i can press tab on the keyboard and that will select every point that is select that is connected to those points so i don't need to go selecting points one by one because i just press tab and everything connected is selected and now the only thing I, I don't want to do is I don't want to bind these two points because I want those points to be actually bound to the body so I'm going to hold alt on the keyboard and I will unselect these two points so now everything is selected but not those two points and now I, I can press here on bind points and you can see how those points now they are green and that means they are following that bone okay and now I will do the same with the teeth here. So I will select this line. If I click on the line, I can select all the points related to the line and bind this. And I will click on this line and also bind. All right. So now if I test my character now, you can see that the lines are actually following this bone. Okay. Now I need to do the same with the texture now. So I will select the body texture here, the binds point tool. And this looks a bit more complicated because we have these uh, crazy lines here. Uh, but it's actually very simple. I just, again, I use the bind points tool. I hold alt and click on the bone. In this case, it's already selected. So it's red here. And now I will just select some of the points here with this tool. I'm using the lasso mode. So I can select more easily here. So I select some of the points and then I can press alt. And now all the points connected to this are already selected. So I can just bind them but in this case i don't want to bind these points too so i will hold alt on the keyboard and i will remove some of the points from the selection so let's say that and i will press bind points okay and now the only thing i need to do is to also bind the points from the teeth so i will just click on the line of the teeth and then bind and the line of the other one and then bind all right so now this is going to follow the mouth so now if i test the mouth you can see how the mouth is moving with it now of course this is not looking great uh, you can see this curve here is not very nice but this is something nice about working with vectors too and is that we can create smart bones so i will select this bone I, I just selected the bone layer so i will select this bone with the select bone tool and this bone has by default this name b7 so i will call this bone i will change the name i will call it mouth all right you can you can keep the, the default name if you want but I, just to make it easier to understand i will just call it mouth and now i'm going to go to windows and open the actions window all right and now if i have this this window open and i have one bone selected and i have the bone layer selected when i create a new action that action is going to have the same name of the bone all right and that means that this bone now it, it will be a smart bone and I am inside of the smart bone timeline and in this timeline I will tell the software every time this bone rotates here I want the points to move in this way so I can select the body line um, vector layer and I can adjust the position of the points so I can make this to look to actually look better uh, maybe I want the character to be a bit happier when it opens the mouth so it will be something like this and I will just play with all this um, 
I can change the curvature again. I will move the, the points of the teeth here and here. Yeah, maybe something like that. All right. So let's suppose I'm happy with this. Now I will do the same with the body, with the texture. So first I'm going to move the points of the, of the teeth. I'm going to select this and move them. And now I don't want to move all these points one by one. So what I'm going to do is with the select point tool, I will just select some of them and then press tab, right? So it will select everything that is connected to that. And now I will use the magnet tool and I will click here. So the magnet tool, tool will move only the selected points. So it will ignore the rest. So now I, with alt, I can uh, set the size of the magnet tool and I can just drag here and adjust the texture. So I can move several points at the same time without having to worry too much about how they look. So let's suppose I'm happy with this. Now I can go back to the main line and now I can open the mouth and it's doing exactly what I want. All right. So the rig is, is ready now. So um, now we have to animate it, all right? And I want to create a walk cycle in the in the video we shared. There was a little walk cycle, so let's animate that. Um, if you want to, I'm going to use a lot of cycles and different things here. If you want to know more about them, I recommend you to check the webinar about cycles I, I recorded some time ago because I'm going to use several of those concepts. But for now, what I'm going to do is first on frame one, um, I'm going to animate the legs for the first step. So let's suppose the character is going to do something like this. Uh, yeah, something like that. And now I will freeze this pose. So all the bones will have keyframes here. And normally in a walk cycle is you have like two steps per second. So I will do that for now. So at half of a second, the legs are going to move like this. Okay, this is very dirty, like, a, like I, I'm not creating a great animation here or anything, but it's just to show you. So I will freeze this pose again. And then at the end of the first second, I will just copy all these keyframes and paste them here. And now I will right click. I select these keyframes and right click and select a cycle. So now these keyframes are doing a cycle. Okay, so we have this. Of course, this, this is not a world cycle, but we have the legs moving now. Um, now you can see how, uh, the lines are vibrating when the moves are, the, the legs are moving and the lines are, the, the brushes are, are boiling, uh, but they are boiling on, on once because this animation is done on once, but I don't think this works very well on once. Also this animation, the character is moving at two steps per second, but I think since it's a big dinosaur, maybe it should be one step per second. So what? One thing I'm going to do is I will scale, select all these keyframes and I will scale them so the walk cycle will be two seconds. But also I want this walk cycle to be, instead of being on ones, to be on trees. Because this animation, because of the style, it, it will work better if it moves every three frames. So now things are moving every three frames instead of every one frame. And I will set trees as the default also. So every keyframe, every new keyframe I create, will be also on trees. And now one final tip before continuing with the with the animation is that by default, the timeline, do you see these vertical lines? These lines are all on twos. So it shows you this line every two frames because normally we animate on twos, but you can change that. So if you go to edit and go to the preferences, you can go to the timeline section and you can set the frame interval to three. So now it will show you these lines every three frames. So this is going to help us to know where to put our keyframes. Okay, so you can see everything will move on trees. Um, all right, so we have this. Okay, one thing that uh, I like it, how it worked for this work cycle is that the step um, was a bit shorter and then the, the character stopped moving and then continue with the second step. So what I'm going to do is this keyframe, I will copy it and I will paste it here. So now you can see the step is shorter and then the character is not moving and then it starts the second step. And I will do the same with this one. I will just select this keyframe, copy and paste 
And now I will set this to smooth because I don't want the cycle to go there. So let me just set this. So now we have this animation like walking and stop, walking, stop, right? And now we, we can start animating other things. For instance, this character can go up and down. Uh, so I will set this to go down first here. So now this character is going down and then maybe it will go up here. Maybe not so much like up and down. All right. And maybe here at the end, it will bounce a little bit more. So it will be like, like that. Okay. And since both steps are, are the same here, in this case, I'm going to remove the keyframes of the translation of this bone for the second step, because instead of animating this twice, I'm going to cycle the first second. So this first second is going to be a cycle and that means it's going to be repeated here for the second step. So now we have this, boom, boom. Well, I don't know how well it looks in the webinar, but, um, but now it's working with this rhythm. Okay. And if you want to adjust that, you can just select this bone and go to the motion graph. And if you double click on the translation channel, you can see in this green line, how the character is bouncing here. So I can adjust that too. So maybe here it goes a bit higher. So now yeah, we have this. All right. And you can see here how the second step is actually repeating there. All right. And now let's just do some quick passing position for this leg. So this leg comes from behind, so it will pass. And then maybe at the end, it will be higher like that. So now it's going like that, boom. And now I will do the same for the second leg. So this leg should be higher here, uh, something like this. And then at the end, it's going to be like that. Oh. It looks more like a world cycle now. Again, this is very dirty, but you have that. And now we can animate the mouth. So maybe, I don't know, the mouth is going to be close here. So I will just create a keyframe for the rotation of the mouth. And then it will open here. And then it will quickly close with the step. Boom, like that. So I get this. And again, this mouth is going to do the same in the second step. So now I can just remove these keyframes I created. And I can set the cycle here. So I can right click, uh, cycle, and now like that okay and we can continue adding some stuff so maybe the neck should also move so maybe when the character is going down the neck is going up i don't know how this is going to work but then when the character is going up the neck can go down so yeah we have some nicer movement maybe we'll move this keyframe here like that and again, since the same thing, the same action is going to be repeated in the second step, I can just remove these keyframes and set the cycle here. So we have that. And now let's animate the tail. So when the character goes down, maybe the tails go a little bit higher. And when it goes up, it will go lower. Let's see how that works. And then maybe at this point, maybe here, it will go higher. And again, I want to just create one cycle for one step and repeat that. So we'll just do that. Yeah, I like that. Uh, and now I will animate the second part of the tail. So maybe at this point it's going to go up. Uh, and then here it's going to go down and then it's going to go to the normal position. And again, I don't want to animate this again. So I will just create the cycle for one step and repeat that. Yeah, maybe it's too much so I can check the, uh, I can check the motion graph for the angle. I have this, this bone selected so I can go to the motion graph, double click on the angle. And now I just edit that to see how, yeah, I think I like it more like this. And, and finally, the, f the last bone of the tail. Um, let's see how it, this can move. Maybe when this these two are going up, this one is actually going down. 
like this and then with everything is going down this one goes up and then again I don't want to animate this cycle twice so I will just cycle it here yeah something like that and finally um, something that I like to do is um, also to scale the bones a little bit but if I for instance if I scale this bone you can see it is scaling the shape but it doesn't look too good it's, it's not very nice but what we can do is to select this bone and to go, go to the bone constraints and set it to be to have a squash and a stretch scaling so now if I scale this bone it will squash and a stretch so it looks much nicer here so let's animate some squash and a stretch so maybe when when the body is going up it's stretching a little bit and then when it's going down like that it's scaling wow and again i don't want to animate this twice so i will just remove these keyframes and set the cycle here so we get the right and let's do the same with the tail just to finish this with the tail so squash and stretch and now i select the tail and let's say maybe the tail will be longer here for some reason yeah let's say i'm happy with that so i will just remove the second step here and set the cycle uh, here so now we got this uh and we can continue um modifying this of course we have the style so i can go to the texture style for instance uh, i can play this animation and i can modify maybe i want the all the textures to have the same line width so i can change that and i can modify all this and i can try how this works and of course it doesn't work well but you can try that and maybe i want anything everything thinner and maybe I want to change the color of everything so i will set the color here and uh, maybe it's going to be, I don't know, blue, maybe more transparent, you see, and maybe the line is also going to be uh, like a darker blue and maybe thicker. And now this is how our, our animation looks. So it's totally different to the original reference, but I just wanted to show you the amount of control you have now. I'm going to undo because I like it how it looked before. Okay, here. So yeah, that's uh, basically it. And everything here is, is vibrating only. I mean, the, line are, are, the lines are boiling only when the character is moving. So if I add a keyframe here and the character stops moving, nothing will vibrate. But if I add, add another keyframe here and now I move the character, the character is going to, the line is going to, going to boil while the character is moving only, okay? And you can make that boiling to be more um, uh, visible or not by just editing the, the brush on the on the style. But I think that's it. And we have like six minutes for questions. I think that was quicker than I was expecting. So I'm very happy about that. So Mario, are you there? Yes. Thank you so much, Victor, for another amazing presentation. Uh, thank all of you who joined us live. We asked from where were you watching us, so we just want to say thanks to Curtis from Houston, Vanessa, Berlin, Nigeria, Naomi, North Carolina, Matt, Egypt, Mansoor, Czech Republic, Thomas, mm -hmm. Pierre from France, Angus from Ireland, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. Uh, thank you all of you who send your questions, say thanks, and also uh, send any kind of message. So let's start with uh, one. A basic question from Jeremy Alexander. Mm -hmm. What is the benefit of separating the layers for line and texture? Can uh, you set uh, up two styles for one and other one for the texture on the same layer? I mean, yeah, yeah, you can. Uh, I prefer to separate it just to have it cleaner. Yeah, for instance, uh, if I select the body line, I can I just know, for instance, where this point is. And I can animate this point, I can change it. But if all this is, is together with all this, let's suppose we, we have something like that and you, you need to find the line, the, the point of the line there, it, it, it becomes more complicated. Uh, so it's just to simplify the, the process. The, there is no, you are not forced to do that. 
but I think you are going to have a, a better time if you do that, if you keep everything clean and separated. Cool. Another question from Claudio Francescato. Is it possible to export the vector drawing, for example, to AI, EPS, or PNG? Uh, yes, you can. Uh, it doesn't support all the features, for instance, all the brushes and specific features that Moho uh, has. They are not supported, but I don't remember exactly where this is, but you can export, yeah, you can export frame to SVG. So basically it's a vector file, an SVG vector file. So from SVG, you can import to any other software, really. Uh, but again, if you are using specific Moho features, they won't be exported to the SVG. Mm -hmm. And um, another question related from Taylor. Uh, can you import brushes from other programs like Clip Studio or Photoshop? You cannot import like like the files of the brushes. Uh, they they are not supported. But actually, you can create your own brushes. So, for instance, uh, I will just open my one of my favorite software here. Um, and I, if I create something like this, let's suppose this is going to be my my brush. So I can just paint something here. Uh, okay, this is exactly the texture I want. So if I save this. Um, sorry, I will save it in this folder. Mo in Moho, we have an, a custom content folder. When you open that, let me just bring it here. Uh, there is a folder that is called brushes. So if you save this, uh, this PNG file into that folder, let me just save it here. Um, this brush is going to be called like that. Um, now this, this file is here. Now I can close or and uh, open and sorry close and open Moho or I can press Control Alt Shift L to reload everything. So when I reload everything, it will also reload the brushes. So now uh, I have if I open the brushes. Now I have my beautiful brush here, and I can use it and modify that and, and set up there. So it's as simple as putting. Uh, the file here, and then you can define whatever you want. And also, in, if instead of uh, of just adding one image, you create a folder and you put several images in that folder, then you have you will have a a multi stamp brush. Uh, let me just show you one here. When they have these little three dots at the top, that means that they have diff different images, so they have different st stamps too. So you have access to that. It's, it's very, very simple to create uh, brushes. So maybe if you want, if you like a brush, maybe you can save some stamps of that brush and then you could import them to Moho. Mm -hmm. Cool. That, that was actually another question from um, mm -hmm. Rodney. So thank you. Um, another question, this one from Pierre. Um, mm -hmm. Our friend Pierre. If, um, I have a question. At first, Victor creates the style, then he draws. But how to do it the other way around, drawing with a brush, color, etc., and then create a style from this drawing? I hope it makes sense. Uh, yeah, yeah, you could do that. Uh, it, it's a bit um, more difficult, but if you draw something, I will just create a new file. Uh, there is okay. There is no easy way to do this, but if you if you created several lines, uh, and then after the lines are created, uh, you you create a new style. So I will just call this style Pierre, okay? Uh, and I select the, okay, this brush again. Okay, this is the, the, the Pierre style, and it's very thick there. Um, now, if I want to apply the Pierre style to everything, I just need to select all these shapes together with the Select Shape tool, or I can press Select All here. And now here, uh, select peer. So now they will have the peer uh, value. But there is no way to like automatically assigning brushes to drawings you already have done. Not for now. Mm -hmm. OK, thank you, Victor. Uh, yeah. Another question, this one from Laura. Uh, I'm an absolute beginner, uh, so this is really intriguing. Now, a simple question. I currently have Moho 13 version. Does any of this style mm -hmm. change also work with 13, 13.5, or only the 14 version? Um, you can do 
most of this with 13, but uh, the drawing tools are way better in 14. And because we have a new graphics engine that works much faster and is much nicer to draw. And also the brushes, they have more options. In, so all the boiling and different things, they are ex exclusive for version 14. So you could do this, but it, it, it wouldn't look the same. It, it, it will look more like flat in, in, in the animation, if you do that. Mm -hmm. uh, another question from Libil. Uh, can you save styles and use them in other files? Yes, absolutely. Uh, actually, if you go to File Export, you can export styles. So you can save... Um, a style, it is like dot .mojo style, something like that, the file. So then you can import it in any any other project too. You can import the styles. And I think it's import, yeah, import mojo styles. You can, you can select that. So you can share different styles um, there. Mm -hmm. uh, one last question, which is kind of repeated. Can you export a video with alpha? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, but well, first uh, I will have to remove the background because if I put a background, then the video won't have alpha because it will have a background. But if I remove the background, uh, I can simply go to export, um, right, to export animation, and you select the export video, and you can, um, for instance, select a mob pro res with alpha or PNG alpha or an AVI PNG with alpha, or this one, ASF PNG with alpha. So any of the formats that say alpha, they will be exported with transparency. So you can import that into any other software. That's awesome. And well, unfortunately, our time is limited, but we think we, we kind of uh, answered all of your questions. Uh, once again, thank you so much, Victor, for another amazing webinar. Thank you all for joining. I, I really hope you you have enjoyed, and I really hope things they look well in the in the streaming because uh, yeah, sometimes the changes are very subtle. So maybe I hope you could see anything there. Well, uh, first of all, we remind you that Moho is a powerful 2D animation software that combines the most powerful animation technology with state-of-the-art professional animation mm -hmm. tools. Draw, rig, and animate easily. You can create your characters directly in Moho with its vector tools, optimized for animation or import images or Photoshop files, keeping the link and layer structure. For more information, visit our website, mohoanimation.com. And the webinar has been recorded and will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. So don't forget to subscribe to receive a notification once the video is available to watch. And also follow us in our social media for more information about this, uh, future webinars, promotions, tutorials, uh, community animations. So thank you so much, all of you who are already following us. And also to join our communities, uh, our Discord channel, which is really active, and also our forum. So with that, thank you so much, all of you. Thank you so much, Victor. Thank you again. Take care, all of you. Bye. Take care and see you next time. Bye-bye.